a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. When those patents finally were retired and literal dozens and dozens of clones flooded the market, initially all the clones were competing on features and not necessarily on price. And that was all well and good because the clones were expensive, but they had features that weren't available on less costly pistols. But welcome to 2021 and those features are starting to show up on less costly pistols. So today we're gonna be looking at a inexpensive Glock clone, comparing it to a super premium Glock clone. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and in the red corner, we have the defending champion representing the high dollar Glock clones. It is the Shadow Systems MR920 made right here in Plano, Texas. And in the blue corner, the challenger, the underdog, it is the Steger STR9S Combat representing the low cost Glock clones. Now, before you guys jump in and yell at me because you say that the Steger isn't a Glock clone, well, yes it is because it takes a bunch of the Glock parts Parts. The trigger mechanism literally is Glock parts. You can use all of the connectors and all that craziness. You can see the two pins just like a Glock. While the magazines are proprietary, it still functions as a Glock. And if I just stole your comment, that's when you jump down in the comment section and yell thief, because I stole your comment like some sort of fancy mind reader. I'm the magic man now. Yeah, I know. Okay? So get ready for some tricks up these sleeves, all right? And I'm reading my YouTube manual reviewer's mind too. You're looking at these guns thinking, boy, I'm gonna demonetize this video because those are modified guns. No, sir. These are pictures from the manufacturer's website and these are the guns in my hand. These guns are totally unmodified. This is advertiser friendly content. So what I'm doing here today is not necessarily just comparing an expensive gun to an inexpensive gun. It's looking at kind of the diminishing returns curve. And if you're not familiar with what that term means, it means if you go from like zero to $500, you get this gun. It is a functional, reliable gun that is pleasant to shoot and it does all the gun things that you would want it to do. Now, if you spend another $500, you could get this gun because the MSRP on the elite version of the Shadow Systems, which is what this is, is just over $1,000 in 2021. That said, the utility this gun provides, meaning it doesn't do anything that this gun can't do. It has upgraded sights, it has a threaded barrel, it has upgraded ergonomics, it comes with a magazine well. This gun has upgraded sights, it has a threaded barrel, it comes with a magazine well, and it came with three magazines, not just two, and the magazines are actually 20 rounders straight out of the box, which is a pretty big deal. That's not to say that this gun isn't worth what they're asking for it, it's just to say that these new guns that they're coming out with are super pleasant to shoot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to run through the features on these guns sort of side by side, and I'll give you my honest opinion about these guns. Then I wanna have a conversation about what it means in 2021 with Glock clones that are coming out as excellent as these are. Like, what does that mean in the context of the higher price Glock clones? So starting with the frame, everyone likes to crap on Glock frames because they say that the ergos are terrible. It feels like a two by four with eased edges. I'm just gonna refer to it as a block in all the Facebook groups because it's so block-like. Yeah, we've all heard it, guys. And you've probably got a buddy who hates Glocks. He probably craps on them every chance he gets talking about how terrible they are. And the reality is likely that he's saying with a lot of passion and a lot of words that his fundamentals of a handgun need work and he shoots left and low. While the Glock frame doesn't do any favors to the uninitiated, if you know how to actually grip a Glock, it's that grip angle and that blocky texture is an asset. It actually assists in the recoil management of the pistol, which is what makes a 23 ounce pistol be able to shoot as well as they do. But the Shadow Systems take what Glock started and carries it to a whole different level. They have an interchangeable backstrap system, which actually changes the natural point of aim. They have a Glock style grip angle, they have a CZ style grip angle, and they have a 1911 style grip angle, all in the same pistol, which is pretty cool and forward thinking. The texture is supposed to be enhanced, but this was my carry gun and I've shot it enough, I think over 2000 rounds at this point that my hand has actually worn down the texture on the frame a good bit. So it's not as aggressive as it once was. The trigger guard is relieved in double undercut, which is nice for building a grip with your support hand. The trigger guard is close enough to a Glock trigger guard where this gun will fit in Glock holsters, which is a super nice feature. There is one rail key slot there for your lights and lasers, just like you 
did want. That said, if you don't like the blocky style Glock frames, this is definitely kind of feels like a Glock in the hand. It's, it's very, very similar. Meanwhile, the Steger STR-9S Combat, they redesigned the magazines that go into the guns. They got MetGuard to make them these thinner magazines, and in so doing, they actually give up two rounds in the magazine. These mag tubes are only 15 rounds, but on the Combat model, it comes with these aluminum extensions, which make them 20 round magazines. They actually come this way from the factory YouTube. This is not modified at all. This is the way they come, I promise. But that said, because they did change the magazine, they're able to recontour the grip, and the experience of gripping the str 9 s Combat is way better than pretty much any of the other Glock clones. It has a palm swell. It has the most aggressive texture at the back strap of any polymer gun that I've ever held. And it basically copy pasted the VP9 finger grooves, which are very well done on the VP9. So the gun just absolutely locks into your hand. You can put a good squeeze on it, bites into your palm because of the aggressive texture on the back strap. That all said, the gun, it doesn't fit in Glock holsters. And that's a major, major oversight because this also has suppressor height sights, as you're seeing. So there weren't a lot of holsters for this gun to begin with. And because they now have introduced a variant with suppressor height sights, it means possibly none of the holsters being made will accommodate this pistol now. So holster support is major and it was a bit of an oversight when Steger put this pistol together. The magwell is aluminum. It's kind of a goofy shape, but it is very functional. Uh, the metal on metal of the aluminum on the steel magazine it doesn't slide super well, but it's better than just reloading into the grip. So between the two pistols, I actually quite prefer the way the Steger is built. Uh, the grip is more ergonomic. It's easier to grip, uh, even if you have a dodgy grip because you picked it up fast or whatever, uh, you can hold on to it really, really well. Moving up into the top end of the pistol, the Shadow Systems has kind of, this is the combat version, which means they've got the window cut. There is a tin coated barrel that has a spiral fluting, which looks really cool. It's got a full length guide rod. It has an optic cut and it has night sights. Now the night sights do co with on the optic they'll go up through I think like a vortex style optic and the optic mounting system is quite good they furnish three like super high strength screws that bolt any optic basically straight down into the slide of the pistol meanwhile the Steger is a chunky boy it is I mean it's a very top heavy gun the serrations are super functional, but they didn't take a bunch of material off the top of the gun. The guide rod is full stainless steel. It has a threaded barrel, and it actually comes with target style three dot fiber optic sight. And again, guys, it is 2021. I need to remind you of that because three dot sights stopped being a viable sighting system around the time saxophone solos stopped showing up in rock and roll songs. So stop making three dot sights, just give us a blacked out rear and a high vis front and life will be good. That said, the rear sight is fully adjustable, which is quite cool. Uh, that's a feature you don't get on a lot of $500 guns. And in the third quarter of 2020, this is retailing for less than $500. Now we need to talk about slides because which of these slides is a better design is gonna depend on your use. And now both these have threaded barrels. So if you're somebody who's going to want to shoot suppressed or with a compensator, or something like that, you're gonna want the lighter slide because the lighter slide is gonna maintain slide velocity, which means you're gonna get reliable feeding and ejection despite the muzzle device knocking down the energy that's gonna be on the slide as it recoils. If you are not going to be using a muzzle device, then the STR9 Chunky Slide is significantly softer to shoot. You have probably read a ton of information on the internet about how reducing the reciprocating mass is a good thing, it reduces felt recoil. If you don't have a muzzle device, that's all nonsense. The heavier slide actually to a point is going to be the softer shooting gun. And if you don't believe me, look at this footage of me shooting the Shadow Systems MR920 and now the Steger STR9S. What you're looking for is how far the brass is being thrown. Because I can tell you, because I went and looked at the little brass piles after I was done shooting, the Steger was throwing brass about half as far. So what does that mean? It means that the energy that is hitting me in the palm as the gun recoils into my palm is significantly less than it is with the shadow systems. So if you're gonna use this for like home defense without a muzzle device, the Stoger slide is actually gonna work a little bit better. It's gonna be a softer shooting experience than the shadow system slide. Since I don't like to use muzzle devices a whole lot, I actually prefer the Stoger slide design. Getting into the triggers, the Shadow Systems has an aftermarket trigger kit. It has a almost flat face that breaks at about 90 degrees. 
and is made at aluminum trigger shoe, whereas the Stoger STR9S also has a flat face trigger, but its trigger shoe is polymer. Both of these guns have better trigger pulls than a standard Glock 19 would, but not a lot better. Uh, they're both kind of like slightly improved Glock 19 triggers. The trigger face on the Stoger STR9S is significantly broader than it is on the Shadow Systems. And as a result, it just feels like it's a little easier to get a hold of and pull straight to the rear. So I actually prefer the trigger that's in the Stoger STR9S to the Shadow Systems trigger. And don't hear me say that like, oh, this trigger's bad. No, this trigger's fine. It's totally serviceable. This is a personal preference kind of thing. Both guns have match barrels in them and both guns do hole on hole accuracy. I cannot stress enough how accurate the Shadow Systems is. When I was carrying this gun and I would check zero every so often, I would cloverleaf groups regularly at 12 yards because the gun is that squared away. I haven't shot the Stoger STR9S a lot, but I can say that uh, I was was starting to print clover leaves toward the ends of my range sessions with them as I got used to the gun and the trigger. So it is a super, super accurate gun as well. And as far as optic cuts, the Shadow Systems has the direct thread, which we talked about before. Stoger uses a MOS style plate, which I mean, it's it's kind of a mediocre way they've done it. If you get the Stoger, be sure and you're using a torque wrench to install the, both the plate and the optic into the plate because the way that the slide is mates up with the plate, there's not anything to resist the forward back motion of recoil. So if you stress the screw heads, you're likely to throw the optics off the top of the gun. And that's why the MOS plates get such a bad rap partially is because dudes will just like screw it in by hand and they'll really crank down on it stresses the screws and enough recoil, it shears the screw heads off and launches the optic. So as long as you use a, a torque wrench, like the Wheeler Fat Wrench, and I'll put an Amazon link down there for you, uh, you should be good to go. So at this point, you might be saying, is this guy really saying that he prefers the Stoger STR9S to the Shadow Systems MR920? No, no I don't. This is still in the Glock ecosystem with inexpensive mags and fits all my Glock holsters. I prefer being able to use all my Glock stuff but th that said, this is still an awesome gun. Like if you only had $500 to buy on a gun, you didn't plan on carrying it, and you don't need a pile of magazines, this gun is awesome. And I, I can't say that this gun is twice as good, but it's domestically produced, so it has a higher production cost than this gun that's made in Turkey. So the reason we're talking about all this is to talk about the price point of guns in general. So with Glock clones coming into the market, sub 500, even sub $400 with the PSA dagger, what is that gonna to mean to the rest of the marketplace? If you have access to an inexpensive Glock that fixes all the things that are wrong with perfection, is that going to create sort of a rush to the established Glock ecosystem? I don't know, but I do know that Glocks are overpriced. And sit down and I'll tell you a story. There's a book that you can check out from your library or borrow from a friend because the guy who wrote it, Paul Barrett, isn't a big fan of people who watch gun videos on YouTube, but he wrote a book called Glock, The Rise of America's Gun, and it basically just tells the whole history of Glock and how they got there. Like Glock has outwitted the US government at every single step. Every time they have tried to pass laws that would potentially affect their sales, they have outmaneuvered the government and come out on top. But most importantly is the part where they talked about what to initially price the Glock Gen 1s at back in like 1983 when they brought them to the States. The Glocks were super inexpensive to make, but they decided as part of a strategy that needed to price it almost what the revolvers that the police were generally carrying back then would cost so people wouldn't think that they were junk just based on what the price tag was. They knew they had a good design, but I think they hit the market between like three and $400 back in 1983. So basically in 40 years, the cost of the Glock has only risen between one and $200. I, I'm not buying it. I, I think Glocks are overpriced. I think that the blue label price that you guys can buy Glocks for is what they should be charging for Glocks in general. But I think the full retail price that we pay if we don't have access to the blue label program is basically robbery. So that brings us about where we were in the AR market about you know six to eight years ago when there were a bunch of people making ARs and the quality range from like super good to super shoddy and everything in between. Because the Glock pattern is so reliable, it's so inexpensive to produce, like are we gonna see innovation kind of go away in the handgun market? Are people gonna stop competing on features and only look at competing price? Are we gonna have a race to the bottom? I honestly have no idea. But I also can say like when this pistol's $500 and the PSA dagger is sub $400, like 
Why on earth would you buy a Ruger Security 9? There's not a compelling reason to at this point because you can get into a Glock style pistol for the money that you wanna spend. So that's why I'm looking to you guys in the comments. Like, what do you think is gonna happen when guns that previously cost $1,100, you can get all the same features for about half the money. Where is this gonna take us? And I honestly don't know the answer, but I think it's worth a conversation. So if you've made it this far and you wanna watch the reviews in the MR920, you can check that out here in the Stager STR9S Combat Review is here. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care guys.